911 emergency. An injury crash at Highway 63 and Highway 30. Huge, chaotic, just massive destruction. I heard sirens. I did hear the helicopter. The driver had fallen asleep. He had went through the stop sign. I don't think he braked at all. We just hit and then we just spun. Many of the occupants were then thrown a fairly significant distance. Where are my babies? Where are my babies? That was the deadliest drunk driving incident in Minnesota history. Four people were killed. Two people were critically injured. They never stood a chance. They probably never saw it coming. Sometimes I think I'm going to wake up and it's all going to be just one hell of a nightmare, but I, every day I wake up, the reality sets in and that I am um, without two children, without a grandchild, and two very, very special friends. Rita Siha and her fiance, Terry Milholland, were celebrating the birth of their little boy last Memorial Day weekend. And it was quite the miracle baby because I was told 12 years ago I couldn't have any more kids. Raymond was just five weeks and five days old when the happy couple took him to Austin to meet the rest of the family. We grilled out with the family, had a good afternoon, and we left there about 7.30. Three of those family members tagged along for the ride back to Rochester. Rita's 19-year-old daughter, Heidi, her two-year-old grandson, Carter, and friend, Jared Beers. I then called Sherry, my son's girlfriend, and said, can you go upstairs and shut the bedroom window because it's going to be too cold for Raymond. But Sherry wouldn't have needed to because Raymond never made it home that night. Minutes later, Rita's van was T-boned by a drunk driver who fell asleep at the wheel. His blood alcohol level was nearly two and a half times the legal limit. He blew through a stop sign, hitting 68 miles per hour, one second before impact. His car went flying into a ditch, ultimately landing upside down. Amazingly, he avoided serious injury. Rita's van went into a spin and then into the opposite ditch. The force was enough to shear off the entire driver's side of the van and the trunk. Nearly everyone was thrown from the vehicle. My daughter Heidi was found here. Carter and Raymond, one of them up there, and one over here, and Jarrah was way back there. Rita managed to survive. So did her grandson, Carter. Both were taken to St. Mary's Hospital in critical condition. Both were hanging on by a thread. I remember whispering in his ear that his mommy wanted him. Carter? And Grandma was okay, and she'd take care of things down here if he would just go to his mom because her arms were open and she wanted him. And it wasn't much longer and he passed away. Carter died the morning of May 29th. I love you babies. Laid to rest in the same casket as his mother and baby Raymond. And I wanted her to hold the babies and know they were secure and not alone. Rita would miss Jarrah's funeral and the chance to say goodbye to her fiance one month shy of their wedding. His children had him cremated and sent to Arkansas before Rita ever came out of her coma. She'd spend the next 10 days in the hospital, recovering from 10 broken ribs, two punctured lungs, a ruptured spleen, and a dislocated shoulder. But long after her injuries have healed, the emotional scars remain. I love them and miss them so much. And the earth isn't the same without them. This is where she comes to see them now finding solace among the wreckage. These are parts from the van. This is where she comes to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and to sing to her angels their favorite song. It's the cloud. And among the five white crosses, a light, giving hope that one day she'll be able to sing this to them in heaven, a light that burns bright through the night, just like the one on Rita's front porch last one in at night, last one to come home, I always shut the porch light off. They haven't come home yet, so we can't shut it off.